you know, as a coach, you can't help but get over it. You know, you can sit back, you have that day, and the next day when you watch the video, then you move on. And that's part of it. I mean, you have to do that for the players. Whether you win or lose, you move to the next game. And that's the best thing about it. Never let a win beat you twice. Never let a loss beat you twice. You, know, you look at the first half, and we did some decent things. And I got in there after the game on third down, and we held them at 30%. I think we had three or four takeaways. We stopped them on fourth down. Uh, we had five sacks, seven tackle for losses. But you know the thing that hurt us? The missed interception when the ball popped up. We had five missed sacks. And it was two of those missed sacks on the same series, which led to a touchdown. So it's the missed opportunities that get you more than anything else. If you make that interception or if you get half of those sacks, the game could have been different, but it didn't. That's what the game is all about. I mean, you can't go back. You don't get overs. We need to be in a position where you have a chance to make a play. You need to make those plays. It's just that simple. The bum, the bummerowski at the end. Yeah. We on the sideline. We saw it. If we just execute, if we playing in zone football. They got two minutes to go. We got three timeouts. Our kids don't really understand that. They not finna kneel down on the play. And my man, Grant, is five, six on a good day, standing up on some boots. And they didn't see him. We start from the sideline, we yelling like we crazy. And, and we overran the football. We had two guys reacted back to it. They both overran the football. If they get them down, we still have opportunity. We didn't get them down, he scored. And, and that's just how the game went. Oh, no, I was one of the worst. And when you, hit, when you win four games, you're going to be bad at everything. Let's be for real. I mean, sometimes you sit here and you sugarcoat things. I'm a realist. You guys know how I am. And it's a year of missed opportunities. It's a year of inconsistencies. And that's why you where you are today. You go back to Oklahoma State, a lot of penalties, Missed opportunities on a couple of takeaways that were called back because of penalties. Just imagine if the interception Chris Boyd had in that game and they called rough in the passer. Or when there was a fumble call, but we didn't get it and the quarterback had one hand on the ball and they reviewed it. Or you look at last Thursday, the missed interception that we had. That's how they scored their first touchdown. Those are the things that happened to us this year. And because of that, you know, you're going to lose ball games and your statistics are going to be bad. When they go bad, you don't want to get them back. And that's the one thing about it. When you start off well, your, your stats are going to stay well. You start off poorly, it's hard to ever get back. And I'll go back to how we talked about a Notre Dame game where on third down, we were awful. We were good on first and second down. We got third down and seven plus, and they converted five of them. Normally, if you're playing decent defense, if you get off the field on half of those, your stats going to be better because now you're getting off the field. That's what it's all about. And that didn't happen for us this year. You know, a lot of missed opportunities. Coach, you attribute, you attribute that to you. Do you just need to get you know, another recruiting class in here to get some better players? What, what do you attribute that to? It, it's a combination of, of a lot of things. There's no set answer on that. It's, again, you have guys in position to make plays. I don't care if you're young, whether you're old. You need to make that play. You need to have the confidence and believe in the guys around you, believe in the system that I can get it done. You know, I'll go back and look at Peter Jenkins from game one to our last ball game. You see a totally different player. He, he was a backup a year ago. He started two games. And each game, he became one of our leaders on the defense. And he went out, you know, last Thursday and come back in the second half. We lost one of the few leaders we had on defense. And that's what you see the entire year. And – We've been in position to make plays, and we, we didn't make them. Again, I'll go back to the first drive in the third quarter. We got two missed sacks. Two missed sacks, but they're on the 20-yard line. It's going to be second down and 20. So they probably not going to get down there to score a touchdown. That's where the game continues to change. Even though we have more new guys in there playing because guys were nicked up, we make those plays. The game could have been different. But, again, that comes back to uh, not making plays. That comes back to being – Inconsistent, so it's, it's a lot of things. It's not one thing; it's a lot of things. How, how much of what L 
as the defense goes back to the line you thought they were going to be really good this year. I think you and Charlie both said that. And, and I don't, I don't we, yeah, I think that's a valid point. You know, Hassan Ridgeway uh, was nicked up in training camp. When we went to Notre Dame. He wasn't in great shape because he missed most of training camp. Uh, going to Notre Dame game, Puna was coming off a roll ankle. Uh, you got a tank coming back from an injury that, you know, he came back, worked hard. He wasn't healthy in that game. So those guys slowly, uh, was, they got healthy. You go back to Oklahoma game, that might have been the healthiest we've been, the fastest we played. And that's where you, you, you were hoping, as Coach Strong said, after the game, you were hoping things would take off, and they didn't. And I wish I had an answer where they didn't take off, but that's just kind of where it is and what happened. Last week you had told us that Eric Roberson is your best pass rusher. I think you said easily. Yes. Is he so far behind in every other area that he's not getting significant playing time? Well, part of the issue is that you know, he missed uh, most of spring practice. Uh, he didn't get a lot of reps in, in camp because he was coming back from a shoulder injury. So he fell behind from that. And then uh, we're going to West Virginia. <laughs> he was going, he was heavily in our, in our plans, got injured in practice. <laughs> I mean, so it's, it's, it's kind of where it is, is that he got nicked up at the wrong times when it was time for him to play. And he's going to get some playing time in this game, you know, because he's probably the healthiest he's been in quite some time. And that's been you know, kind of our story. It's a sad story at times, but but that is the story. And the guys who are out there playing, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, who cares? You're out there playing. So play like a starter. Play like a guy who puts on the University of Texas Longhorn football uniform. And that's how you're supposed to play, with pride, with enthusiasm, with an attitude, no matter what happens, don't get the job done. James, you are a realist. Uh, do you have concerns about your own job security for next year? You always, uh, as a coach, have concerns about that. You know, Bum Phillips said back in the 70s that two kind of coaches, coaches that have been fired and coaches are about to be fired. As mm -hmm. soon as you hired, you're about to be fired. It's just a matter of when. Mm -hmm. And that's what this job is all about. You know, you got to explain to me how Mark Rick, who was 10-3 and three a year ago and 9-3, and three is without a job. How can you explain to me Les Miles went to the A&M game averaging 11 wins a year. If he'd have lost the A&M game, it's a good chance he might not have been there. So... Those are prime examples of what I just said. So every year, am I concerned about not having a job? Of course I am. So Charlie hadn't said you're definitely coming back. Or Charlie anything. hadn't said anything to anybody, but as a head coach, that's what they're supposed to do. You know, to keep coaches working hard, to keep them on the edge, a lot of times you don't tell them certain things. Therefore, you stay motivated. That's the way to motivate people around you. Same as your jobs. I mean, you need to stay motivated because if not, somebody else is going to take your job. Somebody is always in the wings wanting what you have because they think they can do it as well as you can. So I'm one of them old, like that old dog. I know somebody behind me. I don't ever look back. I know what's back there. I'm looking ahead. I don't look in the rearview mirror when I'm driving my car. I'm looking to my windshield because I know what's back there. And that's my mindset and whatever I do. So I take the approach. I'm coming to work the hard like this could be my last day. When I played the game of football, it could have been my last day. When I was injured, I realized that then tomorrow's not promised to you. So you need to take the approach whatever you do, whether you're a garbage man, a postman, or me being a football coach. Do the best you can do every single day. If you do that, you're going to be okay. Whether it's here, whether it's someplace else, that's what life is all about. Do you, do you believe that he's mentioned a couple times that you guys feel like you're one recruiting class away? Is that how you see it? Is it, is it just a matter of getting the 2016 class? And, and, I mean, I'm granted, making a good one, a good class, right? But is that really – all that is needed is one more solid recruiting class? That's, that's a tough question. It's a tricky one. My man just said, I always tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So I'm going to take the fifth on that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that, right, Thomas? <laughs> but I, I think that you do need to get a class that's better than the class we, we got this past year. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really good class. For you to continue to take the next step, we need to do a good job recruiting defensive linemen here. Mm -hmm. I think there's a deficit there. Uh, I think we need to build some depth at linebacker. There's a deficit there. We need to continue to bring in two to three more defensive backs to challenge the guys that are here because competition makes you better. Uh, 
offensively, and even though I'm a defensive back guy at heart, you went up front with O-line and D-line. You need to continue to bring in quality guys to get the offense going. And I'm excited about the guys we have because you started two true freshmen here, and I think they're really good football players. Uh, Perkins back. I think he had a good, good year for us. I think we have a couple guys in the program, but I think you need to continue to build depth in the offensive line. Um, I love our running backs. Running backs get beaten up. So you need to, in my opinion, you need to take two running backs every year. You need to do running back by committee. You need to continue to upgrade your quarterback position. Uh, I think one of our best receivers this year was a true freshman again, uh, uh, Burke. I need to, we need to continue to bring guys in like Burke, guys who are 6'2", that runs, you know, four, four, five. that can stretch the defense. So you need to bring in guys of that nature. That, that's part of it. Whether it's one recruiting class or two recruiting classes, but we need to bring those guys in. Um, we won't be young next year. And I play with Johnny Johnson. Johnny tells me all the time, Vance, you remember 1977 when you were a freshman, we started seven true sophomores on defense, and we won. And a lot of those guys played in the National Football League. But I want to say, John, also, we had a guy, his name was Earl Campbell, <laughs> the Tyler Rose, that I thought was as good as any player to ever come through the University of Texas. And that made a huge difference also, along with all those sophomores that played on offense and defense that year. So a recruiting class, I think, would be outstanding. And then you have to go look at our schedule. You know, our schedule next year, you have Notre Dame. Uh, they come here. Uh, you go to Cal, you have UTEP, uh, I think it's Oklahoma. You have open day before Oklahoma. You have Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. And you look at those teams, what they bring back and what we bring back. Can we be competitive and win some ball games? And I'm talking about the future, but I don't like to draw from yes. I think we have some excellent games here at home, having Notre Dame at home. Uh, I think they lose some offensive linemen, and they were very special football players, offensive linemen, they losing some defensive linemen. Uh, Cal, I mean, they lose a quarterback who I think is going to probably be somewhere first, second round pick. I thought was a special player. I don't know anything about UTEP at all. Uh, Oklahoma has a lot of guys coming back, especially them two big backs. Them boys are special. Wow. So it, it, it's a schedule. But where we're on the program right now, I think we could be competitive, have the opportunity to go out there and compete at home, win some ball games. So an uh, excellent recruiting class would be very beneficial. How do you keep Bayer from scoring 60? Oh, my goodness. That's an excellent question. I don't have a clue right now. When I sit and watch them play, they fourth of the nation in rushing offense. People say they're a passing team. They run the ball on everybody. I mean, Coach, uh, coach Brown's an old-fashioned coach that people forget about. They say, well, he's spread. Okay, let's go watch his offense. You know, he's running power game, gap scheme plays. Most people in this conference don't do that. That's – a physical brand of football. And then they throw it over your head. They threw it over Oklahoma's head. They threw it over TCU. The only reason TCU game and, and Baylor game wasn't 60 to, to 55, you know, they played in a storm. And if it wasn't for that, you, it would have been probably going back and forth. And whoever had the ball last would probably going to win because it didn't look like either team was going to stop each other early before the rain, you know, was really bad. It's going to be it's, it's going to be tough. You know, I'll go back to our game last year. You remember last year, it was 7-0 to zero at halftime, so is it possible to get that done? It is, but we also got four guys on that team that's playing a National Football League to starting too, you know, as rookies. So it, it, it's going to be a difficult task. There's no doubt about it because they move the ball on everybody. And I've always said this. My father used to say this all the time. The best way to play good defense is to keep your defense on the sideline. He was a defensive coordinator too. So, you know, if offense do a little ground chuck on them and ball control, that limits their possessions, and then we can get off the field on third down. That limits their possessions, and we can get some takeaways to limit their possessions again. It gives you an opportunity to get to the fourth quarter, and I've said that since day one. If you can get to the fourth quarter close, you have a chance to win football games. What about that new quarterback, though, that's coming in? Doesn't look like a coach coming in. Well, they run the football, though. Yeah. They are going to run the football, and they're going to ask them to throw the ball deep. You will see – 10 to 15 deep throws in that game. And those guys that ain't throwing the ball deep, you might as well put them on a four-by-one relay team. Them cats can go. I mean, they, they scary fast. 
and, and that's a concern. And I'm watching the Oklahoma State game. He comes off the bench and still gets hurt. And this DB is in great shape. And you're like, this should be an interception. He ran right by the guy. I just started sweating and started sweating my brow, watching my hair. I'm like, come on, is it really? We, can, we have to see this now? I mean, so it's going to be a challenge. But, but you know what? I'm looking forward to it. I know that sounds crazy. Going back to my old DB days, I mean, you love a challenge. If you don't like a challenge, why would you want to play them people? I like playing the Baylors and TCU and Oklahomans of the world. Why is the challenge, which is a great opportunity. That's what you should want. I don't care if you're a freshman or not. What a great opportunity to go out there and continue to show who I am and the direction we're going in. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about going to Baylor for their senior day, and let's go play some football. Coach Vance, how do you time for a couple last ones? How do you scheme against a 400-pound tight end? You don't. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I mean, I just told guys a minute ago, just, you ever see, you know, I used to live in Colorado, and they, I went and saw Clydesdales. I mean, big, pretty, beautiful horses. I mean, outstanding. This guy's like a Clydesdale. And I saw flies on the ground of Clydesdale. He just moved his tail like that. Get the flies off. And when you see him, I feel like he's a Clydesdale, and we got a bunch of little flies trying to get my man down and get away from him when he's trying to block you. So it's going to be a dilemma. I'm just hoping Coach Browse see this and don't play him. I mean, you know, Coach Browse, if you like your, your alma mater from years ago, you won't play him and give us the opportunity not to get injured with that big boy when he rolls through there. You know, so we're going to have our hands full. Those two guys will both have the opportunity to play in this game. Uh, the start, you know, I don't think so. But to play, yeah, you're going to see those guys play. And, and I've told these guys from day one, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, when you show us in practice you know what to do, then you can play. You show me in practice you don't know what you're doing, you're going to be able to sit on the sideline. You might say you're talented, but it doesn't show in practice. So I'm one of them old school coaches. Show me first. Don't tell me what you can do. Show me you can get it done in practice. Now I trust you enough to put you in the ball game. And so all those guys know that. And I don't change my story. And they come see me, and I tell them the same story. You know, guys said, well, Coach, I intercepted the ball in practice. Yeah, you did. That was a great interception. What about them two or three touchdowns you gave up? So that doesn't add up. You know, I went to school back you know, a long time ago. We did a arithmetic. I don't do that anymore, I guess. Everybody have computers. I mean, that's, that's a negative number. Three touchdowns and one interception, that's minus two how I look at it, and that's the math has changed. So, again, they want to play, do it in practice. Is Malik a go? Is Malik is day-to-day -day right now. So, it's going to be day-to-day today to see if he's at practice and see how he does. Have you figured out at all what this team's struggles have been on the road um, and what you guys might be able to do to kind of correct this? Big plays. That's been our struggles at home, on the road. It's been all of it. You know, for a minute, you know, you like, we're in West Virginia. We playing halfway decent before the half, we give up a touchdown. I mean, so that's been our dilemma is, is, is big plays and a lack of takeaways. I mean, when you play good defense, defense starts with big hits and takeaways. And we had not had many on the road. And we need to find a way to get the ball back for our offense so they can go score for us. And that's the name of the game. Whether it's a quarterback sack fumble, whether it's pressure, we get an interception, whatever that may be, we need to find a way to do those type of things, to get the team excited. I think defensive teams, when you play good defense, you bring excitement to your team. I know it's great to see a running back run for 200 yards, a receiver uh, make a great catch, make guys miss. But when you get big hits and you get takeaways on defense, I think the team gets excited, the fan gets excited, and we're lacking in those areas at this time. I'm going to be honest. They came in the game, and we weren't playing very well at that time. It was a stat game. So they came in and threw it. If you go back to the game, we tried to throw it every snap. And so we, were, we said, well, what we're going to do in this game, we're going to load the box, we're going to blitz and make them throw it. And we caught them off guard. And all of a sudden, the offense hit a big play. We three and out, they three and out, offense hit a play. So all of a sudden, they down. 
he gets nicked up the first third down. He limped off the field. And I said, guys, he limping. Let's go get him again. And so we caught them off guard because they came in trying to throw the football. And the best thing they did, which I was excited about, and I'm, I can say it now because we want to play them right now, is that them two big backs didn't touch that football. After our game now, they start running that rock. Who has stopped them since? I'm going to keep going back to the teams who run the ball well. They win a bunch of ball games. Baylor's fourth in the nation in rushing offense. They win a lot of ball games, guys. When you look across this country, I understand about the passing game and the air raid and all of that type of stuff, but you look at teams that are in position to win championships, they can run the football, which makes your team tough. Well, when you guys run the football, you're successful, right? That's a valid point. Warren that, that's a valid point, but it goes hand in hand. Uh, but, again, you're talking to a defensive coach, and I, don't, I grew up with Earl Bruce as a head football coach and Lloyd Carr as a head football coach. Uh, two successful guys, Urban Meyer, who has three national championships, and we were physically tough because we ran the football right at you, and that's what Baylor does. They run the ball right at you. Uh, Oklahoma, when they have success, they run the ball right at you. Uh, look at Alabama. That guy touched the ball 40-something uh, times, and every year they got backs that's rushing the ball for 1,500 yards or so. So what, what running the ball does is shortens the game. It limits the opportunity that the opponent's offense can have. And to me, when you play against great offenses, you want to limit their touches. And if you do that, again, you have a chance to get to the fourth quarter. And I look all across this country, and teams like Stanford, they shorten the game. Florida right now, they can't score, but they shorten the game. They get to the fourth quarter, and you have a chance to win the game. Look at Michigan. They do what? They shorten the game. And that's what it's all about is, is that. But, again, I'm a defensive coach. You know, I'm, I'm not an air raid guy. I'm a defensive coach, and I've been around those style of offenses all my life. And so I'm adjusting to the new era. But it's an old dog learning new tricks right now. You know, I'm trying to find me a new bone to figure out how to slow these things down. It's, but I, I say this about our conference. I'm still waiting for somebody to stop one of these teams in our conference. I said last week, Arkansas, who's playing outstanding football, Never stop Texas Tech. Michigan State, a year ago in a bowl game, played, they were the number one or number two in the nation in defense. They never stopped them cats. Think about it. So when people play the teams in our conference, we get no credit. I'm waiting to see one of these teams out there who's doing all that talking about what our conference is or isn't. Come stop Baylor and TCU, and then you come tell me we don't play good defense. And it's because no one else has stopped them. And Arkansas got some, some big-time players, going to have some draft picks. They went up and down the field on them, too. Michigan State had a first-round corner. Man, that guy from Baylor, man, made him look like he a fifth-round pick. He was a first-round corner. So all those guys out there talking, all the media people, talking all that noise about what people are not doing this conference, let them put on their uniform or go against them people. They be spanked just like they spanking everybody else. I mean, everybody got their mouth. So I'm going to have my mouth today and say, come stop them people and shut your mouths up. Let's ride. Time for one more. Vance, you talk about, you know, Nick Flores and Stanford and Alabama. How long until Texas is back in that conversation? You're hoping it's, it's next year. You're hoping it's always sooner than later. And you have is that to – realistic, though, one year? It has to be. It has to put, again, part of, uh, of a coach's job is about today. And when we get to next year, it's going to be about that day. It's about today of getting Texas back where it belongs. I think everybody around this conference, they look at us and they kind of like sleeping giant, sleeping giant. Don't let them get a recruiting class right now. They don't let them get another one in there. They look at the young people we play and they say, them young cats going to be pretty good. We can't allow for them to get another group that's good or better than that because they can see it's coming. And that's what it's all about. So is it realistic? Yes, it is. When you have young guys that playing as they're doing right now and they take the next step, this, this off-season program and two-day camp, people, they concern. they concern around this conference the, what we can possibly do. So, yeah, it, it could happen. It could happen.